UN chief Antonio Guterres has warned leaders gathered for the climate summit in Egypt that they face a stark choice. Work together now or perish. Nearly 100 heads of state are meeting in Sharm el-Sheikh. And in the spotlight, loss and damage payments, also known as climate compensation or reparations. Wealthy nations are under pressure to financially support developing nations, hit hard by the effects of global warming. We are in the fight of our lives and we are losing. We are on a highway to climate hell with our foot still on the accelerator. On addressing loss and damage, this COP must agree on a clear time-bound roadmap reflective of the scale and urgency of the challenge. Getting concrete results on loss and damage is a litmus test of the commitment of the governments to the success of COP27. I support governments paying money for loss and damage and adaptation, but let's be very clear that that's a matter of billions or tens of billions. We need four and a half trillion dollars per year to make this transition. And that can only come by unlocking private access to private capital. I don't believe it is justice to the young generation when our rivers and lakes are polluted. I don't see justice when big polluters are untouchable. Is it justice for the world leaders to choose profits over lives? French President Emmanuel Macron has urged the U.S. and China to step up and pay their fair share to help poorer countries deal with climate change. But a multitude of other crises, from Russia's war in Ukraine to soaring inflation and the lingering effects of the COVID pandemic, has raised concerns that climate change will drop on the priority list of governments. The most notable no-shows at COP27 are China's Xi Jinping and India's Narendra Modi, leaders of the world's largest and third largest emitters. The COP27 summit will run for two weeks until November the 18th. As climate negotiations get underway in Sham El Sheikh, experts are making fresh calls to help save Egypt's ancient sites. Well, climate change is having dire impacts on precious archaeological treasures right throughout the country. CNA's climate change correspondent Jack Ford reports from Luxor, Egypt. Luxor's West Bank holds the wonders of Egypt's ancient civilizations. These tombs and temples were meant to last for eternity. But amid a human-induced climate change crisis, even the strongest foundations may not survive. Ancient Egyptian civilization was built upon the foundations of nature, finding harmony despite extremes to survive and prosper. They're lessons that can still be applied today amid the steep challenges of climate change. Experts are again sounding a warning as world leaders convene in Egypt for COP27. There is many factors, climate, climate change, hot weather, cold, moisture, tourism uh, attraction by taking photographs. In 100 years, in my opinion, if we do not control the climate change and try to accommodate between the native tourism and the preservation of antiquities, all these tombs will be completely finished. And all of us will be sorry. The tombs in the Valley of the Kings will collapse completely. If you lose your past, you lose your future. And therefore, this is the future, not only of Egypt, but the future of the whole of the world. And this is why it is the duty of the whole world to cooperate together. Restoration and mitigation works are common throughout antiquity sites. The availability of new technologies is offering hope that these efforts will be effective. But it's a costly and time-consuming effort. It is expensive, but you know, uh, we have to. We have to, we cannot leave our monuments be suffering from such uh, things like this without being attention, without interfering. We had really a very bad summer with high temperature which affect the, the, the monuments and the antiquities itself and the, it wasn't like this before. Groundwater levels are being manually lowered at the site of the Colossi of Memnon in Luxor. It is painstaking work taking place all over Egypt. 
With water comes salt, salt eats the, the stones. With water comes vegetation, as I say, it invades. So it is necessary. If we had left, the temple would disappear one day uh, from the action of these uh, enemies. We should save anything we can. Uh, but you know, Egypt is rich. This is a great civilization. It is full of monuments to conserve. We should do anything possible to conserve the last remains. When it comes to Egypt, future success may mean looking to the past for answers. The emergence of uh, humanity depended on uh, climate change. And we had to struggle with climate change from day one. Uh, how did we cope with climate change and exist under all kinds of severe climatic conditions was, I think, first to be able to take action as soon as we can. Uh, the problem today is that the, the distance between observing climate change and taking action has become so long and protracted that we may not be able and we have not been able to act in time. The next week or so at COP27 could offer signs that government leaders are committed to catching up, even though time is not on our side. Jack Board, CNA, Luxor.